What's up, guys? Welcome into a week 11 edition of Film Room here with Daniel Jeremiah. DJ Sunday Night Football, and really at the spotlight, you could argue a, a pair of very talented rookies for both the Steelers and the Chargers. Yeah, this has been a really outstanding rookie class all the way around the NFL, but I think we're going to get a chance to see two of the best here. When you think about Najee Harris, the job he's done running and receiving for the Pittsburgh Steelers, and then obviously we're very familiar with Rashawn Slater and what he's been able to bring to this Chargers team. We're going to highlight that in just a moment. Not only his pass protecting uh, has been outstanding. Chris, I want to highlight what he's done in the run game. But what do you say we get started with Najee Harris here first? Let's get with, get with Najee first because he's been really the centerpiece of this Steelers offense. Yeah, he's been outstanding. And I want to show you kind of what they're doing uh, with their run design. You're going to see a lot of doubles up front along this along the line of scrimmage. And they're going to let Najee kind of work on the linebackers and just – uh, be confident in what he can bring to the table. So on this first play here, I want you to keep an eye on six, this backside linebacker. That's going to be the unblocked defender. That's who Najee Harris is going to have to beat once you have these double teams as they're executed. And watch what he does right here. Boom, a little stiff arm. Now you got the safety, the last one there before the goal line. He ends up hitting two stiff arms here and kind of waltzing into the end zone. A great example of them taking care of business with doubles up front and letting Najee Harris take care of the linebacker. All right, DJ, what do we have here next with Najee? Well, you kind of saw the stiff arm there, right? So you see the power and his ability, especially when you get down tight to finish runs and get his way into the end zone. Well, how about when the picture is not quite as clear, when you get a muddy look like this one right here? This is rare for a young back to have this type of vision and feel. Watch how muddy this ends up getting right here. You're going to see some knockback from this Bears defensive line. I mean, he's got nothing right here. You've got Roquan Smith, one of the best linebackers in the NFL. He's unblocked. He's right in front of your face here. So most young backs are going to say, okay, let me try and just lower my shoulder, get back to the line of scrimmage, avoid a negative run. But watch what Najee Harris does here. He's going to put his foot in the ground, two quick jump cuts, Wow. And he ends up generating an explosive run for 13 yards when there was absolutely nothing there for him. It's crazy too, DJ, because this was probably not his best game against the Bears, but uh, here's another play against the Browns. Yeah, here's another one working in the pass game here, and you're going to see him working on the linebacker here. Watch it, number four in the middle of the field, this middle linebacker. That's going to be the assignment for him. You get a little play action. Ben Rosberg does a good job letting plays expand and then utilizing kind of the one-on-one -on -one matchups underneath. He doesn't really want to push the ball vertically too much, but Najee Harris has proved to be an outstanding mismatch. Again, that stiff arm after the catch, this is a five yard throw. You get a stiff arm, you get a solid effort here, out here on the outside, you get the wide receiver to spring him. And this ends up being a 20 yard gain on a three and a half, four yard throw. DJ, earlier in the year, he was targeted 19 times in the pass game. He caught 14 balls. And I just I look at the, the running back that the Chargers faced last week, Dalvin Cook, explosive both in the run and the pass game. Chargers are going to have to account for, for Najee really all over the field. Yeah, tackling tackling is going to be big. Run game, pass game. You saw on, on a bunch of these plays here, you're going to have opportunities. Now you've got to get him on the ground. Easier said than done. All right, let's flip it over to Rashawn Slater. He's played 100% of the snaps this year. He's been as advertised, and I know you got a few plays. Yeah, let's take a look here at Slater. I want to show you uh, just the ability that he has to anchor. When you're evaluating grading offensive linemen, one of the things you got to know is you're going to see alignments like this wide alignment here from Everson Griffin coming off the left side, which is where you're going to have to deal with that speed to power, right? You're going to have guys get into your chest, and can you stop that charge? Can you anchor? Can you really drop your weight? And I thought this play was a great example of Slater's anchor. Watch what he does right here. The hands get inside by Griffin. Usually when you get your hands inside right there, you're going to walk him right back to the quarterback. But Slater does such a nice job of just dropping his anchor right there, and it's over. The play is over, and you give Herbert a nice, clean pocket to get the ball out to Austin Eckler in the flat. So many examples of this through the first half of the season. What do we have here next? Well, you know, I could show you a million plays of him in pass protecting where he's, he's been nearly flawless. Uh, but I wanted to give you an opportunity to see what he's doing in the run game because you go back to that Philadelphia Eagles game, Chris, and see what he did there. Um, this was a game that, as we'll get to here in a second, was closed out on the ground. This first play here, 
Look at his ability to just leverage and finish. Look at how low he gets. See, we say the low man wins. Look how underneath the pads he gets there. And look at that lane that you generate for your run game. That mm. is a huge crease. And it's all because he's able to leverage. And then you see here at the very end, look at the ability to finish. He wants to chase the play. You're going to pay for it. Will we see the time of possession and how lopsided it's been? I just think this left side, if you can get the running game going by, behind uh, Filer and Slater oh, yeah. and Lindsley, you may have something. Maybe you choose some clock up and keep your defense off the field. No doubt. Um, and this is, uh, this is another great example. You talk about keeping your defense off the field. This is kind of the walk-off run here. Watch him as the left tackle. Keep an eye who's inside of him over Filer. You see 93. Watch how athletic this is to be able to reach and seal him. Get all the way around him. Work your hips around and then create that crease. Filer does a nice job working up to the second level, but that is an incredibly difficult block by Slater. And then next thing you know, Austin Eckler hits a crease. You're out the gate. You're setting yourself up for a game winner. Let's just close it out with this, DJ. You were so high on Slater from the very beginning. If you just take out the word rookie and left tackle, is yeah. he in the conversation right now for one of the best tackles in football? I can't name three that are playing better uh, mm -hmm. than he is right now. And that is, I know that's high praise for a guy in his first year, but he has been, not only has he been, you know, dominant, he's been consistent. You haven't seen those lulls or lapses that you're used to seeing from any offensive lineman, much less a rookie. Uh, Rashawn Slater, I'll tell you what, the Chargers and Tom Telesco hit a home run on this one. Back-to-back -back seasons, you get your franchise quarterback and then a franchise left tackle. Not bad. If you want to see more content like this, Check out the link right here.